Hello Team Iceland, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jeannie and you are in the best place if you're planning a trip to Iceland. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the Reykjavik nightlife scene and I brought on a very important guest. Welcome. Thank you. So this is my friend Magnus, who is Icelandic, but also lived quite a bit of time in the US, right? Indeed, so I lived abroad for a long time, so. Yeah, I think I, I think I figured out what makes Iceland's nightlife so special. Hopefully. Yes, and you've been out in the Reykjavik nightlife scene for many years, so you are just like the expert on this topic. Since I was 15 years old, I've been out there on the town, and uh, yeah, I'm still going. Perfect. I know that the viewers are going to be super excited to watch this video. They have been asking me to make this video probably for years. I'm just not the one. I just don't. Is that why you never come out partying with me? This is why. <laughs> I'm like, and you know, baby, it just puts a kink in things. So we are going to get right into the good stuff. Before we do, make sure that you subscribe to this channel because every single week we give out new videos about Iceland planning. So if you're planning a trip, you want to be subscribed, right? I, I agree. All right. Let's get into it. All right, so first and foremost, I was thinking that you could tell me about why the scene or the nightlife scene is is unique in Reykjavik. Yeah, so I mean, I would say that the nightlife in Reykjavik is probably one of my favorite things about Iceland. Uh, when people come here, it's the one thing that I really highlight to them because not everyone's aware. Uh, it's just a very, just very vibrant. It's, it's raw, it's rowdy. It kind of has an, an atmosphere of almost like a, a fraternity row type of a thing, except it's people of all ages. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's special. It's very lively out there, and uh, you know, on a good on a good night, the streets are absolutely just jam packed with uh, with drunk people. So it's uh, it's, it's if if you're staying downtown, it's kind of hard to miss. It might be hard to sleep actually at times. I know a lot of people come to Reykjavik to experience this nightlife because it's kind of famous for that, right? So um, there's a lot of different options and places for them to go to. And uh, can you tell me a little bit about like when people typically you know go to these places? I would say that unlike other places, you can only really go out here Fridays and Saturdays. Uh, that's because alcohol is very expensive. Uh, very expensive and so you can't make this a nightly thing but the we we like to make up for it on the weekends so hence why it gets so rowdy so some binge drinking yes there's a lot of binge drinking uh, yeah it's it's very um, it's awesome so what are like the hours I've heard rumors that uh, you don't just go downtown at 7 p.m. and stay through the night like <laughs> tell me about the hours in these places yeah so let me preface this by saying in pre COVID times with COVID there are some restrictions in terms of like how late they can stay open etc but in normal times if you were to go out downtown at even 10 or 11 p.m. on a Friday or Saturday night you would probably be very disappointed in, uh, in the vibe because there's no one there. That's because everyone's at home drinking, pre-gaming, because again, alcohol here is very expensive. Uh, so people usually don't come downtown until about 1 a.m. and then they'll stay until four or five or whenever they get they get kicked out. That is very different, especially compared to the US where bars typically close maybe at one or 2 a.m. Yes. Um, okay, and so now that we are currently in COVID times, are those hours shifting a little bit? Uh, yeah, uh, at the at the point uh, at the time of this filming, uh, the time uh, bars close is one a.m. But of course, that changes, and probably within the next few weeks, it'll go back to a normal yeah. structure. Yeah, uh, I understand that you went to these bars last night in order to do research for this video. Of course, I take this very seriously. <laughs> now that the restrictions have, have loosened a bit, I wanted to uh, see uh, what everyone was up to. That's perfect. And it bounced back to exactly the way it's always been. Really? Yeah. Okay, that's great to know. I mean, even during COVID times, it just means that people just go out earlier. So the bars close at one, that means they're going out drinking at seven or eight. Uh, so it's... Yeah. yeah. So what should a tourist do if they want to like, I mean, because Icelanders will just kind of party at their house with, you know, their friends. Mm -hmm. What What's like on the tourist side of things? What are they doing? Yeah. So uh, one thing that I would recommend, and I would preface this for anybody who plans to drink at all here in Iceland, uh, is you need to stop in duty free, either in your home country or upon landing here, you can do it as well. Alcohol is about three times the price of that uh, that you'll see in the US, UK, whatever. Um, a fifth of Smirnoff, probably be like 15 bucks in the States, you're talking over $50. Uh, 
uh, here. So it's very important to, uh, to buy as much as you can. And that's what we do as well. Yeah, it's true. You always load up when you come back from flights. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So yeah, I, I would for, for tourists, I would, I would definitely recommend uh, buying your own stuff, uh, pre-gaming a little, uh, maybe in your hotel, but also there are a ton of happy hours. Uh, almost every bar in the city has some sort of a happy hour thing going on uh, where you can get things for a, a decent price because otherwise you're talking 20, $25 cocktails, 10, $12 beers, uh, which, which is a lot. Yeah, that adds up pretty quick. Yes. <laughs> but what about when you get to the bar? Um, can you talk about like the, the bartender service? Do you tip? Like what's that kind of like? Another great thing about Iceland, this is Iceland in general, there's no tipping. Under any circumstances, not your waiter, not your taxi driver, not your bartender, there's no no tipping. Uh, if anyone tells you otherwise, they are taking advantage of you. Uh, this is a concept that I think a lot of Americans have trouble with. Uh, they feel sorry for the person making $2 an hour uh, as a waiter. That is not the case here. Uh, they make plenty. You will see tip jars at places that are frequented by tourists just because these people, they need to, they need to put the money somewhere. That being said, you are absolutely not expected or, or should you tip. Uh, there's absolutely no need and trust me you're going to be spending enough money as it is so yeah it's already built into their wage don't worry about yes that. so what are people dressing like when they go downtown uh, is there a dress code you know what so, are men and women wearing sorry no uh so no dress code but i will say that uh one of the one of the the fun things of living downtown is is watching all the the tourists walk around downtown because you can spot them pretty easily. They they look like they're about to hike Mount Everest. Uh, <laughs> this is a pretty cosmopolitan city, so it's pretty clear who is a, a tourist and who is a local. Uh, I would just say that wear things that you would normally wear going out back at home. Uh, it doesn't need to be fancy. Of course, it can be. Chances that a, a bouncer is going to let you in if you have you know your hiking boots on and, and other stuff. I would say you're you're not going to have as good of a time. So I would def definitely say bring normal city clothes with you on your trip if you do plan on going out yeah also i would say uh you know the weather it's never really warm out so no. if you're thinking you know heels and a dress um consider that you're going to have to be outside standing in lines walking around i wouldn't recommend yeah well uh most people i would say have not taken that recommendation because you will oh. see lots of women out in in heels and skirts and whatever uh sometimes the lines can be quite long for places so you can get cold on the street. Take it in our stride, I guess. Yeah, so it's part of the experience then. All right. What is the age limit? Like, is there a minimum that that's required to get inside? So in general, in Iceland, and this is legally speaking, the, al the age to buy alcohol is 20 years old, which is actually quite high for Europe. That being said, that's in pretty much name only. Uh, that is not the reality that you'll see out on the street by any means. Uh, you'll see 15, 16 year olds out drinking. Uh, it's, yeah, there, it, it, not much attention is paid to that, I would say. But if you are going to a bar, sometimes the more upscale places do have like a certain age limit, at least for guys saying, you know, you have to be at least 25 or something like that. Uh, you will get carded if you look young. Uh, and if you don't look young, they're, they're not gonna card you. Really? Yeah. Interesting, okay. <laughs> Compared to like, you know, where I went to college, they were IDing everyone that walked in the door regardless, so. Yeah, it's, they, they pretty much just look you up and down if you look young, if you, if, if you look like you're under 20 years old, which uh, many of their patrons are, but they have, of course, an ID that, that says otherwise. Okay, all right. <laughs> Uh, maybe don't show this this uh, video to 16 year olds then, but <laughs> all right, good. So when you're out and about, uh, what's the best way to get around? Are people generally able to walk from place to place or are you calling a taxi? Can you touch on if there's Uber in Iceland? Yes, so unfortunately there is no Uber in Iceland. There's no Lyft in Iceland. That might change in the, in the future, but for the time being, it's just taxis. Uh, they are very expensive. So unless it's, super cold out or you're staying super far away or you you know it's super late i would say try to avoid taking taxis uh, as much as you can because it gets it can get very expensive but luckily for you all of the bars uh, clubs everything they're all pretty much on the same main drag it's the same uh, main shopping street so and that's where everything is either on it or just right off of it on side streets so it you can pretty much just walk up and down and see what places look fun and then pop in. And that's something that also that most people do here. You don't just go to one bar or club, you bounce around a lot. It's kind of like a, a pub crawl of sorts. So people are maybe going to four or five different places in a night. 
Uh, before we get into your favorite places, yes. um, can you talk a bit about safety? You know, um, some people come here when they're younger or solo, fe you know, solo female travelers. Mm -hmm. So what's that like? Yeah, so I mean, uh, Iceland, I think I think we average one murder a year. Uh, so it, it's a very, very safe country, uh, generally speaking. Of course, when you have alcohol, of course, things like, uh, you know, mischief and bar fights and stuff, those types of things can happen. Uh, the police are very busy at night, nothing serious, but of course, you know, uh, breaking up parties and fights and this or that. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as solo female travelers, you're, of course, the same risks apply everywhere and use common sense as you would, but in general, you're not gonna find a safer place to be going out if you are alone, something like that. That's just not, uh, not something we have to really worry about that much here, thankfully. Yeah, that is really good. Okay, perfect. So one one unique thing about Iceland is that there are, there are no open container laws here. So uh, come join us drinking in the street. Uh, that's totally okay. You're not going to get in trouble. Yeah, I mean, if you're coming to Iceland and you, if, I would hope that you would want to interact with, with the locals. Uh, I would say that Icelanders are, are more, more open and friendly than most other Nordic countries. Uh, it always catches me by surprise when I'm traveling to Stockholm or Oslo or something and people are just not as willing to you know, make fast friends with you just to meet someone who who's standing next to them at a bar. Uh, that's one thing that I think that we are more American in that way. Granted, it is still a, a Nordic country, but that being said, I think it's much more open and you're much more likely to meet locals here than you would be in some of these other places. That's good to know. Yeah. So don't be afraid when you're at the you know bars and things like that, that you can say hello. If you recognize Icelandic, right, you can mm -hmm. just say hi, maybe introduce yourself. And also be aware that they are also not afraid to say hi uh, to you as well. So don't be caught off guard if uh, if people just start talking to you out of nowhere because that's uh, that's what drunk people do. Question uh, that just popped into my brain about this. Okay. Is the, like, what's it called? The app, is that is that a real thing where you have to check if you're related to someone? It's an app for for a genetic database that we created as a country like 20 years ago. So uh, it's something that, you know, you can go on there and you can see like how many generations back are you related to someone else. As long as you're at least two generations, you're good to go. <laughs> uh, but everyone is related eight generations back. So you do have some wiggle room there. It's uh, unique to, <laughs> to Iceland, right? In the small population. I love it. Okay, <clears throat> in closing, I was hoping that you could give me maybe your top three to five places that you like to go or that are popular here. So yeah, so there's a wide wide variety uh, and I'll give you kind of like a cross section. So uh, one place that never seems to fail uh, is a place called Danish Bar. It could be anyone from 16 to 70 years old. I mean, it's really anyone and everyone that you that you see in there. And yeah, everyone just singing along, having a, having a good time. It can be quite cramped, but that's also the case for most Icelandic bars. Um, another place that's also fun that a lot of tourists enjoy is a place called Pablo Disco Bar. And that has a very, uh, a very retro, tropical, 70s glamour type of vibe to it. Uh, so do the staff, uh, but they have a lot of great cocktails and music. I would say that skews more towards a bit of an older crowd who, you know, who still like to have a good time. So you're not gonna see teenagers in there, uh, you know, maybe 30 or 40 is the average age, but you know, they're, they're there to have a good time. There is one gay bar, or main gay bar here in Iceland uh, called Kiki. Uh, that's also very fun. They, they are welcome. They are welcoming to, to everyone. So it's also a good place for straight people to go to, to have a good time. They have lots of over the top stuff like drag shows and, and different things, but it's, uh, it's, it's a very good time. Another one that is more, excuse more, younger is Solon. So Solon is like an, an upscale restaurant in the day, uh, but at night it turns into pretty much a, a nightclub that you can hear for like blocks and blocks and blocks away. And it typically is more teenagers and people in their 20s, etc. It's much more of a scene, uh, but it gets pretty, it gets pretty wild, I would say. Great places. That's a good place to start at least. 
Um, if you guys are interested, all of the places that we've talked in this video, as well as so many other things around Reykjavik, restaurants, um, the top sites, hidden gems, where the toilets are, I created a Reykjavik digital map that you can check out. It's on my website and I'll link it in the description below. It is a gem in terms of visiting Reykjavik and all of the things that you're gonna need to see. All right, that's it for today, Team Iceland. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for joining. Or maybe I could get you back for another video in the future. Absolutely. If you like this video and you found it helpful, please like and comment below um, if you have any follow-up questions or let us know what bars you're gonna hit up. Maybe I'll see you there. We'll see you guys in the next video, but until then, happy planning.